Welcome to this comprehensive tutorial on boost converters. Today, we will dive deep into understanding what a boost converter is, how it works, and how to analyze the given circuit diagram. Let's start by understanding the basic concept of a boost converter. A boost converter is a type of DC-DC converter. It is designed to step up, or increase, an input voltage to a higher output voltage. These converters are essential in various applications, especially when the power supply voltage needs to be increased efficiently. For example, they are used in battery-powered devices where the battery voltage is lower than the required operating voltage of the device. Understanding how a boost converter works will enable you to design more efficient power supply circuits and troubleshoot existing ones. Now, let's move on to identifying the basic components of a boost converter, which you can see in the provided circuit diagram. First, we have the input voltage source. This is the starting point of the circuit. In our example, the input voltage is plus 5 volts DC. The input voltage is the initial power provided to the boost converter. In real-world applications, this could be a battery, a solar panel, or any other DC power source. Second, we have the inductor, with a value of 1 Henry. This component stores energy in its magnetic field when current flows through it. Inductors resist changes in current. When current flows through the inductor, it creates a magnetic field, storing energy. The ability of an inductor to store energy is proportional to the inductance value and the current passing through it. Third, we have the switch. In our circuit, a square wave generator acts as the switch. It alternates between connecting and disconnecting the inductor to ground. The switching frequency here is 1 kHz with a duty cycle of 68%. The switch is crucial in controlling the inductor's connection to the ground. It regulates the flow of current through the inductor and the charging and discharging phases of the inductor. Fourth, we have the diode. It ensures current flows in one direction, preventing the capacitor from discharging when the switch is closed. The diode allows current to pass through it in only one direction, acting as a gatekeeper that ensures the capacitor charges properly and prevents backflow of current. Fifth, we have the capacitor, with a value of 10 microfarads. This component smoothens the output voltage by filtering out the ripples caused by the switching action. The capacitor stores and releases electrical energy, smoothing out voltage fluctuations to provide a more stable output voltage. Finally, we have the load resistor, with a value of 1 kOhm. This represents the load to which the boosted voltage is applied. The load resistor simulates the actual device or circuit that will use the boosted voltage from the converter. Now that we have identified the components, let's discuss the working principle of a boost converter. The operation of a boost converter can be divided into two main phases, when the switch is closed and when the switch is open. Phase 1, switch closed, also known as the on state. When the switch, controlled by the square wave generator, is closed, the inductor is connected to ground. Current flows through the inductor, creating a magnetic field and storing energy. During this phase, the diode is reverse biased, blocking current from flowing to the output. In this state, the inductor is building up magnetic energy, and the voltage across the inductor increases gradually. Phase 2, switch open, also known as the off state. When the switch is open, the inductor's magnetic field collapses. The stored energy is released, and the inductor generates a voltage in addition to the input voltage. This combined voltage makes the diode forward biased, allowing current to flow through to the capacitor and the load. The capacitor charges, and the voltage across the load increases. During this phase, the energy stored in the inductor is transferred to the capacitor and the load, boosting the voltage above the input level. The duty cycle, represented by D, is crucial in determining the output voltage. It is the ratio of the time the switch is closed to the total switching period. For our circuit, the duty cycle is 68%. The duty cycle controls how long the switch is closed compared to the total time period of one cycle. D 
equals t on divided by t on plus t off. Where t on is the time the switch is closed and t off is the time the switch is open. The output voltage, represented by V out, of a boost converter can be calculated using the input voltage, represented by V in, and the duty cycle, represented by D. V out equals V in divided by 1 minus D. Given our input voltage of 5 volts and a duty cycle of 68%, we can calculate the expected output voltage. V out equals 5 volts divided by 1 minus 0.68, which is approximately 15.625 volts. However, in a Rayall circuit, there are inefficiencies and component losses, which is why the simulated output voltage is slightly lower, at approximately 14.329 volts. These inefficiencies can be due to the resistance in the components, imperfect switching, and other real-world factors. When designing or analyzing a boost converter, several practical aspects should be considered. First, inductor selection. The value of the inductor affects the current ripple. A larger inductor reduces the ripple but may increase the physical size. The choice of inductor should balance size, cost, and performance requirements. Second, switching frequency. Higher switching frequencies allow for smaller inductors and capacitors but increase switching losses. The switching frequency must be chosen to optimize efficiency while keeping component sizes manageable. Third, diode and switch ratings. Ensure that the diode and switch can handle the peak current and voltage stresses. Selecting components with appropriate ratings ensures reliability and longevity of the boost converter. Fourth, output capacitor. The capacitor should have a low equivalent series resistance, or ESR, to minimize output voltage ripple. A low ESR capacitor will provide better filtering and a more stable output voltage. Let's go through an example calculation using our circuit parameters. The input voltage, V in, is 5 volts. The duty cycle, D, is 68%, or 0.68. The inductor, L, is 1 Henry. The capacitor, C, is 10 microfarads. The switching frequency, F, is 1 kHz. Calculate the output voltage. V out equals 5 volts divided by 1 minus 0.68, which is approximately 15.625 volts. The output ripple voltage can be approximated using the formula. V ripple equals V in times D divided by F times L. This formula gives an estimate of the voltage ripple based on the input voltage, duty cycle, switching frequency, and inductance. In summary, a boost converter effectively increases the input voltage to a higher level by using an inductor, a switch, a diode, and a capacitor. Understanding the role of each component, the duty cycle, and practical considerations are crucial for designing and analyzing these converters. Thank you for watching this tutorial on boost converters. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of how they work and how to analyze them. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask. Happy learning!